Hello and welcome to another session of this course marketing management part 1. We are in the concluding session of this third module capturing market insight. So, this is week 4 session 6 of this course. So, in the last class we started discussing about data collection preparation and an analysis and uh, I have talked about the hypothesis testing part and then I have talked about the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. Uh, the utility of the null hypothesis wherein uh, if it is being falsified it uh, allow you to inference that uh, H1 is uh, true that uh, researchers argument is uh, validated. Now, I talked about the errors in hypothesis testing part where you have a 2 by 2 matrix when you reject uh, a hypothesis which was true it is called type 1 error and when you retain a hypothesis null hypothesis when in fact it was a false is called as type 2 error. And then I started talking about uh, the data analysis in particular I talked about the univariate data analysis I talked about uh, one way analysis of uh, variance that is ANOVA and I started talking about uh, I gave you an example about this advertising copy and it is uh, independent variable advertising copy and its effect on intention to purchase. I started talking about the dependence techniques and we have finished at this point uh, we, where we have discussed what is NV ANOVA and what is NCOVA. So, NV ANOVA is basically when you have more than one categorical independent variable then it is called NV and COVA and when you have the one of the independent variable in this analysis of variance as a metric variable then it is called NCOVA. Sometimes it is important to basically control the, uh, the effect of uh, some of the variables uh, like uh, uh, household size in the example of uh, effect of price on household consumption of a cereal. So, there the control this is this control is required and that is why this NCOVA is very useful in those cases. So, moving from there uh, we we talk about uh, further MANOVA and MENCOVA. So, when you have uh, just one uh, dependent variable you can use uh, ANOVA and uh, NCOVA depending on the type of independent variable. However, when you have more than one dependent variable. Uh, then you, you can basically you have to use the MANOVA and the null hypothesis in the case of the MANOVA is that vectors of means on multiple dependent variables are equal across groups. And when these dependent variables are correlated uh, this, uh, this, this, ana this analysis is called as MANCOVA. Talking about uh, another dependence technique which is uh, mo one of the most commonly used for marketing research. Uh, technique to analyze the data where you have correlation and regression. Uh, correlation is basically the strength of uh, examination of strength of association between two metric variables and what is assumed here is that these two metric variables are linearly correlated. They, they are basically they have a linear relationship between two. Now, the Coming on to this uh, regression analysis the relationship exists between uh, uh, independent variable and uh, independent variable. Now, what happens in the regression is that uh, we are interested in to measure how much the variation in dependent variable is being explained by the uh, independent variable or independent variables depending on whether it is a bivariate uh, regression or it is a multivariate regression bivariate re regression is when only one independent variable is, is, is there and when you have more than one uh, independent variable in the regression model you call it as multiple reg regression as they are shown in this uh, two equations uh, of a bivariate regression model and the multivariate regression model. One of the biggest utility of this uh, regression analysis is that you are able to get the information that what is the form or the structure of relationship between independent variable and the dependent variable and based on that form or the structure of relationship uh, the values of the dependent variable can be predicted uh, from the values of the independent variable. Depending on the variables like uh, price or the advertisement uh, or some of the other marketing mix variable you can basically predict the value of the demand one of the biggest uh, application of this uh, regression is in the demand forecasting kind of uh, 
analysis where this regression method is used. Now, we talked about ANOVA where the independent variable was categorical. Uh, we talked about regression where independent variable uh, uh, and in ANOVA uh, the dependent variable was metering. Now, in the regression analysis we have uh, dependent variable and independent variable both were metric variable. However, there are cases where uh, our invo uh, analysis involved where the dependent variable is in the form of a categorical variable and the independent variable are uh, in the form of metric scale. So, there the discriminant analysis is, uh, is commonly employed and the discriminant analysis it is similar to like a regression equation uh, as shown in the previous slide. However, you see that instead of y notation that is being used is d because uh, instead of uh, metric variable your dependent variable is in the form of uh, is in the form of a categorical variable or the categories uh, that exist. Uh, the utility of this uh, discriminant analysis is that uh, these categories can be distinguished or uh, can be um, understood uh, or differences across the categories can be predicted or uh, understood based on the values of the independent variables. And what more you can understood from the discriminant analysis is that you can understand the varying level of the importance of these different uh, independent variables. So, like in this uh, discriminant analysis equation, uh, if I have I if I have the data and if I can uh, analyze I can tell which of these independent variable x 1, x 2, x 3 or uh, x i is more important and uh, one of the utility of this discriminant analysis is uh, are probably quite often it is used is that uh, as, it, uh, as I will explain it through an example that it could also be used to understand the differences across the categories. Now, you see you have a the dependent variable which is a amount of uh, expenditure that a family makes uh, on a monthly basis on the movies and you have a independent variable couple of independent variable here in the form of income attitude towards entertainment, family size, uh, uh, time spent together. These are, uh, these are some of the independent variables which are basically the predictor of uh, amount on uh, uh, that a family spend on the movie. You can see that uh, the amount spent on the movie is in the three categories high, medium or low and this independent variables are on the metric scale. Now, when you, when you basically solve this, uh, this discriminant uh, of uh, uh, function, you will be able to calculate the value of B1, B2, B3 and B4 since we have four variables and depending on the, the, the value of the coefficient, uh, you can basically say which one is more important, which one is less important. Uh, so, basically that uh, from the from there you can draw the inferences to uh, that can help you in the decision making process. Now, talking about uh, multivariate data analysis techniques uh, that, uh, uh, that are based on the in, uh, independence techniques. Uh, that is, uh, there, there, there are two types where, where uh, variables are interdependent and where the objects have uh, commonality, the inter object similarity. So, variable interdependence techniques are prim uh, primarily in the, in the form of uh, factor analysis. Factor analysis is a class of techniques for data reduction and summarization. Uh, summarization. I will explain to you through the one, one of the examples what, uh, how this factor analysis is used in the marketing research. Uh, uh, however, the factor analysis is used to recognize underlying dimensions that explains the correlation among a set of variables. Uh, initial variables, uh, now you will see that in this uh, uh, factor analysis that uh, your initial variables have high correlation and you try to basically combine or you try to discover or you try to identify the, the underlying factors that is basically the uh, that is responsible for uh, for the variation or the correlation across these uh, uh, variables now you will uh, you will see that uh, since it is a data reduction technique that uh, number of factors uh, 
identified will be less than the, uh, the, the or, uh, original number of variables and the each factor should explain individually more variance uh, that is being explained by the uh, individual variables. Now here I have an example uh, from the airlines industries as you can see on this um, table uh, customers were asked to rate uh, the benefits from the airlines on these uh, 9 attributes uh, like uh, uh, on time performance how important it is to, to, to their choice of a particular airlines comfortable seat, uh, sufficient leg space, uh, tasty food, frequently my friend uh, travel, so how your boss or the colleagues or the friends are traveling by the same airlines, then you have cartaceous staff and what is the life of the aircraft, average life of the aircraft, uh, whether uh, the airlines is using new aircraft or old air, aircraft, how important is that, then frequent fl uh, flyer program, then uh, suitability to my schedule. So, these are basically 9 uh, criteria uh, which were used to examine the choices uh, of uh, the respondent and you can see that uh, once they have uh, given their responses, factor analysis is being performed and you can see that uh, uh, in this uh, table that uh, this, this one is. Uh, uh, I am not going to in much detail into the statistics part, but you will see that on time performance sufficient uh, on time performance, uh, new aircraft and uh, suits my schedule are the benefits which are uh, uh, loaded on this factor 1 which is which, which uh, I have labeled as features. You have factor 2 which is like uh, tasty foods frequently my friends travel, cartaceous staff and the frequent flyer program. These are the combined attributes which are of similar type and they are captured in this flying incentive uh, factor. Then you have third type of uh, uh, factor which is com convenience and under which you have comfortable seats and sufficient leg space. I have summarized the results here that within features you will see that. Uh, three attributes are combined together that is on time new aircraft and suits my schedule. So, these are basically the uh, functional or uh, benefit or feature related benefit that is expected from an airlines by the customers. You have um, uh, second type of uh, benefits in the form of uh, flying incentive that is tasty foods frequently my friends travel cartaceous staff and uh, frequent flyer program. And then you have uh, in the convenience factors, uh, you have uh, comfortable seats, sufficient leg space. Now you can see that instead of having 9 individual variables, you can capture more, uh, uh, I mean uh, you can capture uh, almost equal uh, amount of information through these 3 factors uh, for further analysis. And uh, you, you can use this basically to uh, segment the market. Uh, to basically uh, come out with the segmentation scheme in the market and also to understand what will be the what is what should be the positioning inside the specific segment uh, in that uh, market. Now you see if, if, if this is one segment that is we call as feature seeking segment then you have to position your airlines based on these uh, these parameters if you are basically targeting a segment which is which is fly, uh, seeking flying incentive then you have to focus on these uh, 4 benefits and when you are uh, uh, targeting a segment which is convenience seeking then you need to focus on the comfortable seats and the suffici sufficient leg space. So, this was uh, about factor analysis. Uh, the another class of techniques uh, which is uh, very commonly used is the cluster analysis uh, to classify objects or cases. What is cluster analysis? Cluster analysis is to classify objects or cases into rel relatively homogeneous groups called clusters. Objects in each cluster tends to be similar to each other and dissimilar to objects in the other cluster. I will explain it to you that this is the total uh, number of objects in an analysis and now you will see that uh, these objects have been classified on two variables like V1 and V2 and now you see that uh, uh, 
uh, or probably I can relate it with a previous example. Uh, if you if you have uh, the the combined score of each of the the respondent on these three factors, features, flying incentive, and convenience, you can come out with a basically a 3D plot. Uh, that v1, v2, v3 and all the three respond uh, all the three variables on three dimensional scale and each of these respondent in that uh, survey can be located on that and you will find out uh, that uh, you will find out uh, by the cluster analysis that uh, you have cluster of customers located together. You can see that within a clusters the units are basically homogeneous and across the clusters uh, they are far away or uh, they are uh, heterogeneous uh, across the clusters. Uh, the cluster analysis uh, biggest application is in the segmentation uh, of the market and then coming out with a suitable marketing program to the cluster needs, specific cluster needs. The another important type of technique which is uh, used in marketing research is, is conjoint analysis. Uh, uh, conjoint analysis attempts to determine the relative importance consumers attach to silent attributes and the utilities they attach to, to the labels of the attributes. I will explain to you uh, the basic uh, thought behind the conjoint analysis is that uh, each product is conceptualized as a bundle of benefits and uh, corresponding to those benefits uh, there are different level for each benefit. Like uh, if I talk about um, the status symbol as a benefit from a car. So, you see that the status symbol from a, a basic car or a basically hatchback model is, uh, is very low. On the other side when we go into the um, sedan segment or a SUV segment then it is a, on a medium scale and when we talk about luxury cars then probably it is the highest level. So, you see that corresponding to the different level of this uh, status symbol you, you have different products. So, when you combine the different levels of uh, various benefits in a product, you get the different kind of profiles. Now, what happens in this conjoint analysis is, we try to calculate uh, the importance of each of these attributes and we try to calculate the utility corresponding to the each attributes uh, different levels. I uh, will explain it to you through an example, however, the basic equation is that any product seen as a bundle of uh, benefits and you see the total utility of the product is being uh, conceptualized here as the, uh, as the sum of the utility corresponding to the different benefits and their levels of the benefits in a product. This is an example uh, which is uh, my own students work and I can explain to you here is that uh, this person has worked on the, uh, the design of the business simulation games which is the best profile. Uh, are the profile of highest utility from the business simulation games. So, he has basically four uh, benefits are the four attributes that is total price, user interface, number of modules for decision making, networking capability of game. Now, you see with corresponding to each of these attributes, you have a different levels of those uh, uh, attribute like uh, this total price has three levels that one time annual payment of 85,000 rupees to 1, 000, uh, 1 lakh and a maximum of 20 teams allowed at a time. Then you have a second level of this uh, second type of pricing, then you have the third type of pricing level for uh, this attribute. Similarly, user interface is 2 by 2 and then you have that means four level of uh, four type of uh, user interface level. Number of modules uh, are basically three types. Uh, the three there are three levels of number of module that is basic level, standard level and the advanced level you have uh, with respect to networking capability of a business simulation game you have three types of games internet based games, LAN based game and the standalone game. Now, you want to calculate uh, what is the importance level of these four attributes and corresponding to those uh, attributes uh, important level what is the utility of each of these. Uh, different levels. Now, you see that the importance level of each of them has been calculated in the networking capability is found to be the most important attribute. Then you have a user interface and then a total price and then number of modules. So, you can see that uh, networking capability is the most important and corresponding to the networking capability you can also calculate the utility 
corresponding to each of different level. Uh, the use of this conjoint analysis is that once you get the utility corresponding to each level of uh, uh, important attributes, you can come out with the optimal product design uh, which a customers will want in a particular segment of the market. Uh, the last uh, uh, technique that I am going to talk about is multidimensional scaling and in multidimensional scaling, uh, we capture the, the respondents perception or uh, their preferences to basically represent them in a special, uh, especially by means of visual display. Uh, the perceived relationship among stimuli are uh, represented as geometric relationship among points in the multidimensional space and you will see that the graphical representation, uh, this is a, uh, the, this, uh, this relationship are explained in the uh, uh, visual display form in the, in the spatial is, uh, uh, space. The axis of the spatial map are assumed to denote the psychological basis or underlying dimensions respondent used to form perception and preferences for stimuli. Now, I will give you an example like uh, if I ask uh, respondent or the uh, potential car buyers uh, about the similarity of the different car brands as shown in this uh, figure uh, that uh, what is the level of similarity of any two brands taken at a time and then based on that data I can create a sort of this perceptual map or I can. Uh, look into the important attributes uh, of car purchase and uh, if I capture the data about each of these car brands, uh, I can basically come out with this kind of perceptual map where uh, I, I can see that, uh, that the, the, the different brands can be put on a two, by, uh, the two dimensional space and you see that uh, the two dimension uh, uh, are basically that. Uh, one corresponds to sporty and the conservative, uh, the two extremes are sporty and the conservative type and the other is basically based on the, the price of the car that is expensive versus cheap. So, you see that uh, this is a basically a possible uh, uh, type of uh, perceptual map of uh, the different brands available in the market. Um, this is a basically an imaginary data based on which this. Uh, perceptual map has been created. You will find out that uh, in multidimensional scaling most of the times we try to uh, create a two dimensional or at max three dimensional map because it is easier to visualize the two dimensional or uh, at max three dimensional uh, um, map. Uh, going beyond that is not possible for us to understand. Uh, most of the times you will see that two dimensional maps are used. So, with this uh, multidimensional technique I conclude this. Uh, module of this um, marketing uh, uh, management course that is capturing market insight and when we will meet in the next uh, um, week, we will start with another module uh, on buyer behavior uh, of this course marketing management. Since then, uh, thank you.